list. So hypothesis, if, so this starts out looking a lot like the sandwich theorem and actually works a lot like the sandwich theorem. And one thing to notice, these terms have to be non-negative. So uh, if they're negative, you need to do something else. Uh, we will talk about negative terms around 10.6, where we get to the alternating series, but until then, I think almost every one of our sequences will, or series will have positive terms, pretty much. Uh, so you have a small, medium, and large term, and this is for all k. So this is the hypothesis, and there's going to be three conclusions we're going to draw from this. And of course, it doesn't matter where we start. So if this converges, so if you know this series converges, what does that mean about the BK series? It also converges. So each term's less than or equal to the other term, so there's no way the sum's going to be any more than this sum. So if the big one converges, then the middle one or the slightly smaller one converges also. And second, let's say you know that the little one, if AK diverges, what conclusion can we make about BK? It also has to diverge. Now it's important that that these were all positive because uh, if we didn't have this requirement right here, you could have a k diverging to negative infinity, and then the other one maybe adds up to zero. So you have to have that bound uh, where everything is positive. So we'll do one example that works, and then we'll do one example that doesn't work. Um, you said three points? I lied, there's two. Okay. The next test has three. Okay. Yeah, the next one has three. So our first example So it doesn't really matter where it starts, this particular one. So we're going to compare it to another uh, series. So let's think, before we do that, let's think when k is really big. Does this minus 1 really matter? No. Not really. So if k is even like 100, that minus 1 is not going to make a big difference. So we're going to try to compare to. I'll go with the blue. So if that minus 1 doesn't matter, let's choose uh, BK. Well, let's not use BK. Yeah, I'll just call it BK. BK. So BK will be 5 over 5K. So I just wrote it out without that minus 1. And tiny bit of math. This is 5 over 5 times 1 over k, which is 1 over k. Does this series, this BK series, converge or diverge? Sure. When, when you plug infinity in for k, it go to zero. So the terms get really small. 
But what did we see last session? We did integral comp integral test, and this guy turned into uh, it's a p series of p equals one. So I'm going to write uh, p this is a p equals one series. So it's a p series with p equals one, and that diverges. It's right on the boundary. If it was raised, if it was k squared, it would have converged. Um, but this one diverges. So it's a divergent p series. All right. We found a series that seems like it acts similar. similarly. The question is, we need to set up an inequality. So let's try to set up this comparison inequality. Which way does the inequality go here? Which one of these two is bigger? The one on the left is bigger. The one on the left is bigger. Let's see. Why is the one on the left bigger? And this, you have to start thinking about the denominator. The differences between the two is the denominator. So the numerators are the same. Which denominator is bigger? Yeah, so we want the smaller denominator gives a bigger fraction or bigger value. So this denominator on the left is the same thing as the one on the right, just less by one. So that means the whole fraction is a little bit bigger. And the way you can write that out, if that's hard to see, so this should be pretty clear right here. 5k minus 1 is less than 5k, less than 5k. And then I'm going to reciprocate both sides, which is not a move commonly done with inequalities. What does this do to our inequality sign? It's going to flip it around. So this is a lot like multiplying by negative 1. So if your original, uh, if you had something smaller, when you reciprocate it, you're going to have something bigger. And then just multiply each of those by 5 if you got up to the top. So sometimes it's better to start with comparing denominators and then reciprocate and uh, get up to the top inequality. All right, so we can see this inequality right here. Now the right side diverged. So we had a smaller series that diverged, which means the bigger series has to diverge for sure. So we got, found a smaller one that diverged, so our bigger one has to add up to that much or more. So by comparison test, I'm going to write something a little extra. You're absolutely welcome to write this down. So our summation 5 over 5k minus 1 is greater than or equal to summation 5 over 5k. That's the intuition of why this works. We found a smaller one that diverged. And so of course our big one has to diverge. So it's ooh, not 0, double 0, or infinity. All right, so our little one uh, added up to infinity, so our big one has to add up to infinity. So by comparison test, summation 5 over 5k minus 1 diverges. So you don't have to write what's in the green, but that's the intuition behind the comparison test. So this series, really similar. What's the only difference? Plus sign. So there's a plus one instead of a minus one. Unfortunately, that plus one makes each term a tiny bit smaller. 
we made our denominator a little bit bigger so the terms got a tiny bit smaller. We also know from our experience in calculus that when k is really big, that plus 1 is not very significant. However, it means we can't, uh, if when we compare it to this divergent series, we're going to be less than a divergent series, which means you can't really say anything. So this particular one right here, the comparison test is not going to help us out. So I can't really use the comparison test on this one. If you are uh, determined to use it, you can, but you need to get a little bit more clever. So here is my brain. So looks like it is divergent. But I can't, I can't, I can't compare, it's like a Q. Can't compare to to the one we used before, which is k oh, five over five k. Um, we could compare it to it, but we won't get any result out of it. And we'll find that there's a bigger one that diverged. Well, guess what? No matter what series you're thinking of, there's a bigger series that diverges. So we need to get a lot more clever and do something that is a bit different than this. Is that true? It seems true. Let's see. So I put more in the denominator of the new one so it will get smaller. All right. So this inequality is true. I just added extra into the other denominator to make it smaller. All right. Why did I pick this one? What can I do in the denominator? So I could cancel all the fives. Let's factor cancel. Be a little bit careful. So now I'm looking at this right here. And it turns out this one diverges, so then I can come back and say that the original diverges. I think I'd have to use uh, the integral test, though, to show this one diverges. This is not a. This is not a p-series, so you can't go and say uh, divergent because it's a p-series. This is not in the right form for a p-series. Uh, so I could show this diverges by the integral test. It's a very easy integral. It's something like a natural log uh, x plus 1 goes to infinity, and that would be infinity. So I could use integral test right here. What we're going to do instead so I'm going to solve this in a very different way. We're going to bring in a new test, and it's called the limit comparison test. So it's a lot more useful. The limit comparison test doesn't care if that's a plus 1 or a minus 1 or a plus 100 or minus 100. So the limit comparison test uh, doesn't worry so much about details. So it says, well, when the k value is really big, how, is, how do these seri series relate to each other? <coughs> So it's a lot more useful. So I strongly recommend you only use the limit comparison test if you're going to use one of the comparison tests. So just use the limit. Um, I do think the regular comparison test is really good for intuition. It's 
when you see a red down, it, it's very obvious that you know, your smaller one diverges, so of course the bigger one diverges. Or if a bigger one converges, then the smaller one has to converge. This one uh, is a little, more, a little less intuitive. So we need AK to be um, not just non-negative, actually it has to be positive, so it can't be zero. Uh, and we need our BK to have the same property, that all the BKs are more than zero. And this is for all K. So I'm going to write these down as the most useful one first. If you are careful, you can pick a BK that will always um, have this relationship right here. So if lim k approaches infinity, a k over b k, so you're actually dividing the terms. equals a number that is greater than zero. So if the limit of these two is a positive, int uh, positive real number, then summation AK and summation BK act the same. And when I write act the same, I mean they either both converge or they both diverge. So just like the uh, integral test, I think I wrote down act the same. Maybe I didn't. But this is just like the integral test. They either both converge or both diverge. So you're looking at the ratio of terms. So let's say our number is 2. Let's just pick a nice, easy, positive value. So let's say you know that the limit ak over bk approaches 2. What that means is the ak terms, when k is really big, are uh, very close to being twice as big as the bk terms. So basically, if you added up all your bks and you got 27, if you add up all your AKs, it's something close to double 27, or 2 times 27. Even if you got a big number like a million, well, the sum is pretty close to a million times the other one. But either way, a million times a finite number is still a finite number. So this is the most useful. There are two other versions that are slightly less useful. So uh, there's no way that this uh, fraction will ever, uh, the limit of this fraction will ever be negative because you're taking two positive values. So there's no way you're going to get some negative value out of this. There are two other possibilities that are uh, not a positive real number. One of them is zero. And what is the other possibility? Undefined. Almost. Infinity. Infinity. So they can either get bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller. But the smallest they can get is zero. Obviously, the biggest they get is infinity. Uh, you can get undefined, but if you get, uh, like, or it does not exist, then you can't apply any of these at all. And I will say, if you really get uh, does not exist as your limit, you chose a bad BK, basically. Because BK is your choice on these. All right, so these are the other two possibilities. So let's look at this really carefully. Let's say this limit is 0. What does that mean about the relationship of AK to BK? It doesn't necessarily mean that BK is approaching infinity, because AK could be getting really tiny. But what does it mean about the relationship of AK to BK? BK has a value, but AK approaches 0. It could be, but I want the relationship of AK to BK. AK is way smaller than BK. Way, way, way smaller. So, what does that mean about the conclusions we can draw? 
So AK is smaller, and you know that uh, BK converges. So if AK is smaller than BK and BK converges, so we have to have both of these being true. Then, so this is our entire hypothesis, then summation AK converges. So our last case, let's say that this limit is infinity. What does that mean about the relationship between the AK terms and the BK terms? Yep, so AK is a lot bigger because this fraction is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So AK is bigger than BK or BK is smaller than AK. So let's say you know that the little one diverges. That means definitely the bigger one has to also diverge. Now if you pick your BK carefully, you should be able to get a number out of this. And if you pick it carefully enough, you should be able to get the number one out pretty consistently. So I recommend only use the first version and work a little harder to pick a good BK. So I'll make this first bullet point super, super bold. So use this. You can almost always get your problem to, uh, your limit to approach one if you pick a good BK. So let's apply a limit comparison test to the example we just failed at doing. Well, we didn't really try. We did 5k plus 1. All right, what is a good BK to choose? You're using too many brain cells. Does the plus 1 matter? Nope. Stop thinking right there. BK is going to be 5 over 5k. which of course is one over K. So now we're gonna look at lim AK over BK. A lot of times you're gonna have fraction of fraction, or fraction of fractions. So you may wanna just go ahead and write it as product of reciprocals. So I know I'm about to have fractions of fractions, so let's go ahead and do this. So our AK 5 over K plus, ooh, 5 over 5K plus 1. Times the reciprocal of BK is going to be 5K over 5. So right away, 5, 5 cancels. What is this limit? You could use L'Hopital's rule, or you can just use the physicist shortcut method. That limit is 1. So I would take derivative, derivative. With L'Hopital's rule, I get 5 over 5. but you can just shortcut with the physicist method, knowing the plus one doesn't matter. So this limit is one. You should come out with one if you made a good choice for BK. All right, so this means they behave the same. I know that that uh, BK converges because it's a conversion P-series. So LCT, limit comparison test, 
our summation of AK converges, which is 5 over 5K plus 1. Oh, yeah. Duh. Divergent. <laughs> All right, just making sure you're paying attention. All right, so it's a divergent P series, so by limit comparison test, this diverges. Now you should be able to see that it doesn't matter what number I added right here. I could have added a million. Wouldn't have changed anything. Could have subtracted a million. Wouldn't have changed anything. So limit comparison tests a lot more j applicable to a lot more types of series. So I could give you a problem where I don't tell you the closed form, what AK itself looks like, and just show you, hey, here's the pattern. And so you're going to have to write down what does AK actually look like. So what type of pattern do we have going on here? There's really two patterns going on. What is the numerator pattern? Plus 2. Plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Plus two. So that's going to look like 2k. So every time you go over 1, you get another 2. It doesn't look like k plus 2. It looks like k times 2. What about the denominator? Squared. It's like a square progression. So we'll try k squared. And just look in here, let's start k at 2. So my k squared denominator works out. 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. What's wrong with our numerator? Starts in the wrong place. Starts in the wrong place. So we've got to offset it correctly. So what do I need to do to 2k so that my k equals 2 term is 3 fourths? Subtract 1. Subtract 1. So 2k is always even, so I knew it had to be odd. So it's going to have to be plus or minus an odd number. I start at 2, so it's. It needs to be a minus one. Um, why did you? Because each term in the numerator is plus two. Why did you multiply it by two, but in order to move it over so that it's three? Why did you subtract one instead of multiply? So, so the two k that just means when k goes up by one, I get two more basically. So that gives me that plus two plus two plus two. But then I had to get, when k equals 2, I have to get the first term, basically. And so when k is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So I have to compensate to get down to 3, so I subtract 1. If that was like a 1 and then a 3, I would have done minus 3. OK, what should we compare this to? What is really important in here? Or maybe easier question, what's not important? Minus 1. Turns out the times 2 is not terribly important either. So let's go to compare to k over k squared. Now, I would recommend you compare to 2k over k squared, but I'm just going to compare to k over k squared. So I know that minus 1 doesn't matter. Let's just compare to this. This is 1 over k, which is going to be a divergent p equals 1 series. That p equals 1 series is very popular. And p series overall, very useful. So we have fractions of fractions here. So we're going to go 
AK times the reciprocal of BK. Now, if you notice, I'm using the unreduced version of BK because it's going to cancel a lot nicer. Uh, I only reduced it so we can easily see that it's going to compare to that P series, or that it is the P series. All right, K squared, K squared, that's gone. We just get 2K minus 1 over K. And what is this limit? Some will be two. That minus one doesn't matter. Limits two. So two is positive real number. So they both behave the same. If I would have done 2k, I would have gotten one out of this at the very end. So if you make a little better choice with your bk, you'll generally be able to get one pretty consistently. All right, it's a good place to end.